Hi, I'm Oliver and this is Deep Cuts, a channel dedicated to music for lovers of music. I'm doing something a little bit different today, inspired by some of the messages I've had from you guys. One of the persistent questions I've had is, how do I get into classical music? How can I get into a position where I appreciate the music? Because I'm not at the moment, or for whatever reason. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit today, but this isn't going to be a 10 pieces of music to get you into classical. I will do a video like that as a follow up at some point. This is more of a general talking points video. Before I continue, I should point out that classical music as a term is not very well defined and it's a little bit confusing. So that in terms of musical periods of history, there is a classical period, which is about from about 1750 to 1820 between the Baroque and Romantic periods. Despite this, in the contemporary age we have canonised all Western music between the 11th century and the 20th century as classical, broadly speaking. It gets kind of confusing though, because while I would prefer to call it orchestral music, not all classical music is orchestral. There are string quartets, there are piano sonatas, there are madrigals, blah blah blah. My point is that the term is a little bit confusing and uh, classical music is not a term that a lot of people like because it doesn't strictly define the music you're listening to. Generally speaking, we're talking about most Western music from the 11th century to the 20th century, but obviously we're ignoring popular forms of music from the 20th century like jazz, blues, um, forms of pop music, whatever. So it's the orchestral music, it's symphonies, it's ballets, it's magical sonatas, everything else I've mentioned. Basically what I'm saying is it's a little bit confusing, but try not to let that put you off. I just thought I'd give you a little bit of context around the word, but maybe that's just confused things a little bit more. Let's move on. So, classical music, often thought of in the same thought bubble by dwellers of the 20th and 21st century as uh, doilies and stuffy ballrooms and uh, castles and Shakespeare. Those things might excite some people, but they don't excite others, and that can put them off. Um, uh, classical music as a, as a form and as an idea. But as with any art form, it's how you approach the art form and it's also a lot to do with those preconceived notions you have about the art form. Which leads me to my first point, throw those preconceptions away. With an open mind and a clear head, work from composers such as Debussy, Holst, Wagner, Prokofiev, Schumann can be some of the most emotive, cinematic and explosive experiences you will ever have with music. But all the time you're viewing this music alongside dusty gramophones and the Queen and high tea, you're stopping yourself from truly connecting with this music. I think people often end up thinking of classical and orchestral music as the soundtrack of the aristocracy. It's just the way our contemporary society seems to work. And in a way it's happened with jazz music for a lot of people as well, which is hilarious when you think about it because uh, you know, some of these composers, as well as the jazz musicians of the of the early 20th century, were the punks of their day. They weren't all about the aristocracy. I mean, some of them were, but a lot of them weren't. A lot of them were creating um, creative, original, inventive, inspired pieces of music. They were innovating and challenging audiences. They were perplexing them in some cases. You know, fun fact, Stravinsky's Rite of Spring was performed the first time in 1913 in Paris, and the audiences were perplexed and confused they thought they were part of some elaborate joke because they couldn't understand the complexity of the work. The way classical music is shoved into a box is such a shame because some of these pieces of music can be electrifying, terrifying, enlightening and exciting. Don't expect to like everything. Classical is the same as all other forms of music. Just because you like or dislike one person doesn't mean you're going to like or dislike another. There are hundreds of years of history to delve into when looking at this kind of music. You've got the Renaissance period, Baroque, classical, romantic, hundreds and hundreds of different composers with different ideas, different themes, different beliefs. To listen to one piece of music from one of these periods and decide that you don't like that entire period of music is a bit like, I don't know, listening to, um, who's really innocuous, Ed Sheeran, uh, and deciding that you don't like any music of the 21st century. That would be bloody stupid, wouldn't it? You might decide you want a challenge, so you listen to something by Franz Liszt, um, or maybe you want something cerebral and calming, so you're going to listen to one of Debussy's piano sonatas, or something by Satie. You know, it doesn't all fit in the same frickin' box. It's the same as 21st century music, it's the same as 20th century music. This cannot all be shoehorned into one thing, so don't think that it can. Take time to sit down with these works. 
I give classical and orchestral music the same space in my head as I do a contemporary record that I haven't listened to before. I sit down, I take some time out to listen to it, but I think with orchestral, with classical music, it's completely different because um, it's very nuanced. Some of the pieces are very long. You're talking about long suites that could be an hour or two hours long. Um, and surely to really pick up that experience, you need to sit down and take some time out to understand it. If you're the type of music lover that has a ritual to listen to new pieces of music, use that ritual, whether it's lighting candles, pouring a whiskey, running a bath, whatever it is, do it, sit down and just let this music take you across to another world. Read up. Read up on the context of the pieces. I tend to find if you read up on the contexts of a piece of music or a piece of art, it makes the art more interesting it enriches that art we, we did a discussion video on that ages ago link there if you haven't seen it a little bit of a plug there um, but that is just the case and it's the same with classical and orchestral music some of these pieces um, might come from a very intense period of history therefore they reflect a certain historical period something was going on at the time they might have a, a very intricate interesting narrative that's been written alongside them they, they might be part of a ballet which if you understand the ballet then informs that piece more so just sit down and read up on it if you're interested in understanding more about the way these pieces work you do it a disservice by not reading up and understanding the composer um, and uh, you know what that piece of music is about reading up on these thematic ideas and the concepts can really help you understand the power of this music and if you know, if, if your experience of listening to classical is relatively thin it can cure that all classical is the same syndrome that so many people have. Look into different recordings. Now to be fair this can be a bloody frustrating thing about trying to get into classical music. The insane number of recordings that exist for a single piece, you know, where do you start with that? This is the difficulty, there are so many symphonies and so many different pianists around the world, different string quartets, you know, at, at some point every single concert pianist has probably performed Bach's Goldberg Variations or Brahms' Piano Sonatas, um, so which one do you start with? Well again a bit of research will probably do you good here, there are all sorts of guides on the internet um, about which is the best recording but the thing is there's new recordings coming out all the time and a lot of it to be honest comes down to personal preference for example Jupiter from Holst's Planet Suite always sticks out to me if the violins at the beginning are a little bit tardy with their 16th note opening and if the crescendo the first crescendo in Jupiter isn't explosive enough it completely turns me off the piece and I have to go and find another version of it so I always listen to a specific version and you'll probably find that when you start if you start finding a piece you'll enjoy you'll start listening to a few different versions and you'll probably feel around and work out which is your favorite favorite um, interpretation of the sheet music. And you have to remember there's no real final say on what this music's supposed to sound like because it's only written down in sheet music form for, for much of it. Of course, um, you know, there's, there's very specific musical signposts across there. You have different um, dynamic markings and different uh, musical expressions, but there's still room for maneuver there. And that then comes down to the interpretation of the conductor and also the performers. Treat it as a project. I would do the same thing I would do with an artist discography that I've never listened to before. You dive in, you listen to a piece, you decide if you like it, you move on to the next thing. And before you know it, you'll start to be formulating opinions about different styles, different ideas, what you do like, what you don't, and you'll start to enjoy little things and, and formulate your own responses to the music. Um, and that's, that's probably the best thing to do here. It might be a little bit daunting at first because there is such a history of classical and orchestral music, but you, when you start to do it, you start to get into it, it will not seem quite as, quite as over the top and quite as an insurmountable task. It might seem a bit like learning a different language if it's music you're not really used to, but, but it, it is worth it. It really is. And you really start catching on to the ideas and the little nuances of this music after a little bit of exposure to it. Oh, and an obligatory final point, enjoy yourself. You know, if you do this for a few weeks, you listen to some different, different composers and different pieces and you decide it's a complete slog, don't worry about it, it's fine, whatever. Uh, but I do think that the majority of you, if you take some time out to listen to this music and appreciate it, you will find at least one or two pieces that will blow you away uh, with their power or with their beauty or with their intelligence and creativity. Uh, it just, you know, it's just one of those things that I think is worth your time if you're willing to put in a bit of time. I'll do a follow-up video soon with 10 landmark pieces you could start with. That might give you a good idea of, of a basis. But hopefully this has given you some ideas and maybe just given some people the confidence or given them the confirmation that it is worth spending your time doing this. Because I, I genuinely do think it's worth your time. Also, you need to get yourself some Alex Ross. This guy is a music critic and he's an absolute genius. He 
to be honest, really opened my eyes to classical music in a different way. He's written a couple of different publications um, and he appreciates music all the way from early classical all the way up to uh, 21st century stuff. So he does have such a keen musical eye and an understanding. So definitely check that up. I'll put some, um, I'll put a couple of links in the description on Amazon or something like that so you can check it out yourself. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching this and I'll be back next week with another video. See you soon.